Dr. Paul schools Dr. Fauci. Should we call her President Harris? Putin offers to debate Biden and the NYPD to police hurtful comments. Fauci is a petty tyrant. I've told you that many, many times. And it's increasingly clear because here we are at a place where we should have um, a, a willingness to just allow people and allow, allow states and allow individuals to have much more control, much more autonomy over their lives. And Fauci is fighting it at every step of the way. He does not want people to be able to just say, I've gotten vaccinated. I've had enough. I, I now want to just go about my life and make my own decisions. No, the public health bureaucrats, the consensus lockdown left, they aren't letting go of their little grip on power. And I want to remind you, we are now in the one year month anniversary. Uh, a year a year ago to the to this month, we had the beginning of lockdown, the beginning of this whole new change in, in approach to public health. And it's absolutely atrocious that here we are arguing with public health authorities, unelected bureaucrats about whether after vaccination we should be able to return to normal activity. They won't allow it. And it's not based on the science. This is a judgment call that they're making. And here's at the heart. Here's what's at the heart of it. They don't want people to be able to start living their lives again as they see fit because then everybody will say, well, hold on a second. They're okay. They're not dying of the virus. They've gotten vaccinated. They're fine. Why can't I do that? If they really wanted everybody to get vaccinated as well, there's an incentive issue here. I mean, what they're telling us, the sales pitch from the Fauciites is get vaccinated, but you still got a distance. You still gotta wear two masks not one mask two masks one mask not enough maybe goggles too gloves goggles two masks it's not that uncomfortable it's not that much to ask look at the numbers you know they they tell you go get vaccinated deal with all the hassle of getting a vaccine appointment depending on where you are it can be really onerous some places are better about it than others and afterwards you still you still must do all of the things you did all the mitigation measures that you were doing before you got vaccinated. This is absurd. Dr. Rand Paul, you know, Duke University Medical School, the the guy's an MD. It's amazing to see how many people think that he's a Jill Biden fake doctor on the left because I've been tweeting about this. I've been trying to make the case publicly and, of course, poke the liberals over this because they deserve it. Poke the leftists. I don't like I've never liked the term liberal for the left. Those of you who have listened to my show now for going on 10 years uh, know that I've always said that they are they intentionally use that. That's a misnomer. That's a misleading term for them. They are anti-liberal. They're authoritarians. They are statists. They are leftists. They are collectivists. They are not liberal. But anyway, uh, there was an exchange on Capitol Hill yesterday where Dr. Rand Paul uh, gave Oh, I don't know. You could say something of a an on air enema to Dr. Fauci because we wanted to see what this guy has really got going on. Want to see what his arguments really are. And Dr. Fauci is full of it. Absolutely full of it. Here's how I I want to play this for you. And I want you to really hear the back and forth because it's so rare that this guy is subjected to. To anybody who really knows the data and understands the science, he's every bit as smart. I'm going to tell you this right now. Dr. Rand Paul is every bit as smart as Dr. Fauci. He's smarter than Dr. Fauci. All right. So I I don't want to hear any of this. Oh, he's not a scientist. Actually, he's an MD, too, and has been practicing practicing medicine for a long time. Dr. Fauci has been a bureaucrat. He's been sitting around in conference rooms at the CD, at, not at the CDC, at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. I just wish it had an easier acronym. CDC is easy to say. Here's how some of this went. What study shows significant reinfection, hospitalization, and death after either natural infection or the vaccine? 
it doesn't exist. There is no evidence that there are significant reinfections after vaccine. In fact, I don't think we have a hospitalization in the United States after the two-week period after the second vaccination. We yeah, don't you have a death in the United States. You you're not hearing what I'm saying about variants. We're talking about wild type versus variants. And what, now, proof is there, what proof is there that there are significant reinfections with hospitalizations and death from the variants? None in our country, zero. Well, because we don't have a prevalent of a variant yet. We're having one, can I finish? We're well, having 117 that's becoming you're more dominant. Your policy based on conjecture. No, you it, have the it isn't based on conjecture. It absolutely is based on conjecture. What we know about other similar viruses and how vaccination works is that, and also what we've seen so far in the in the numbers is that the vaccinations are highly effective against even the variants, as Fauci calls them. You know, isn't it fascinating also, and hat tip the Federalists for this one, uh, the variants, you can call them the Brazil variant, the South African variant, the, you know, uh, you know, whatever variants, there's some that have these numbers. But if you call it the 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 Wuhan coronavirus, you're causing hate crimes. That That's a, that's amazing, isn't it? So it's, it can be a Brazil variant that's super dangerous and deadly and kills people. That's well, although that's actually not true, by the way, it's. It's slightly more contagious, they think, but it, it isn't more deadly based on what we've seen. Or, or you could say that about South Africa, but if you call it the Wuhan coronavirus, you're causing hate crimes. It, it, interesting sta double standard that we see there. Um, but variants are always going to exist. And there's always the possibility of more variants. So you see what Fauci is telling you is you have to wait and we have to see if it's possible that there's a much higher reinfection rate with the variants than there currently is, because here's what here's the debate he doesn't want to have. Hold on a minute. You're telling us that people that are 95 percent. Uh, safe against this virus aren't aren't able to go out now without all these restrictions in place and live and live their lives. What is safe? Is it 100 percent? What's the number? When do we get our lives back? When does this actually stop? They don't want to answer that. You'll notice they don't want to tell you. People are starting to pick up on this. In fact, out in Oregon, there are state health officials who are advocating for forever mask policy. This has happened now. In the state of Oregon, the, the health officials there are, are lobbying or are pushing for, we should just wear masks forever, guys. This is a good idea. These people are insane. They're insane. They're experts. But it's so refreshing to see Rand Paul slap around this little totalitarian smurf, Dr. Fauci. And this is how it goes. So you some you want people to wear a mask for another couple of years. No, you've been vaccinated and you parade around in two masks for show. No, you can't get it again. There's almost there's virtually zero percent chance you're going to get it. And yet you're telling people with them that have had the vaccine who have immunity. You're defying everything we know about immunity by telling people to wear a mask who have been vaccinated. No. Instead, you should be saying there is no science to say we're going to have a problem from the large number of people being vaccinated. You want to get rid of vaccine hesitancy? Tell them they can quit wearing their mask after they get the vaccine. You want people to get the vaccine? Give them a reward instead of telling them that the nanny state's going to be there for three more years and you got to wear a mask forever. Amen. Oh, Rand Paul. God, what a what a breath of fresh air on this shit, on this issue. They also there's there's some uh, some exchange before the one I played for you where he just see he cites major scientific studies about reinfection and about what happens after vaccination to show that there a, a successful vaccine is not one where people worry about reinfection reinfection is possible anything is possible but when you're talking about public health it has to be based upon risks it has to be based upon the numbers as fauci says and they're just making stuff up now when they say well yes the numbers show you should be able to go back to your normal life the numbers show that everything should be fine but there's this possibility of a variant. There's this chance that maybe this thing is different than all the other things we've seen. We don't know that yet, but you will continue to suffer from our dumbass lockdown policies 
until we have proof beyond our any doubt, any doubt that this isn't some aberrant situation. That's how they're making health policy now, my friends. That's what they're doing. They're saying, yeah, sure, the numbers suggest that you should be fine, but until we're satisfied that this isn't the different thing from all the other situations like this before it, we're not allowing you to stop with our measures, our restrictions. This has all been a campaign to force you to obey, to bend the knee to the dictates and the anxieties of the leftist lockdown mob. And we are starting to push back effectively enough that they are losing their grip on our faces. Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching The First on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from The First, please click subscribe.